run and gun. Are you ready? I am ready. Are you ready? Not quite. I gotta tighten all my stuff down because this thing, this thing is a monster. <laughs> That's a 12 inch sure barrel? All my stuff's tight. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Yep. Commence. <laughs> so you might be saying to yourself, Kurt, short barrel 308? What do I want a short barrel 308 for? If I want a 308, I want to be able to reach out and touch something with it. And my response to you would be like, you can still do that with this thing. The concept of short barrel 308s was put in my mind about two years ago. I was at a shoot and we were smacking a standard size piece of steel out to 400 yards with some change in there. And that was done from a standing or prone position with a red dot sight with a 50 yard zero. So these guns are quite capable, but what the 308 cartridge gives you is that barrier penetration capability that doesn't exist with the 5.56 round that most people can go out with a 5.56 and smack a 400 yard, tar yard target with it. It's really not that hard to do. You can get it done with a short barreled 7.62 by 39 gun, like the white Russian here. It can be done with that thing too, but you get an oomph upgrade with the short barrel 308. And today's video, what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at the capabilities of this short barrel 308. This is a CMMG Mark III, so we're gonna first hop in to what all is comprised of that. But I'm gonna tell you that the coolest thing that you get when you're talking about short barrel 308s is you essentially get the length of your can for the length of the barrel that you deleted, and this weighs less. It also does this. The Banshee 200 series Mark III is CMMG's short barrel 308 pistol, designed to be a portable heavy hitter for anyone who wants to sling 308 without lugging around an 11 pound gun. Speaking about weights, the gun comes in just at seven pounds unloaded with a 30 inch overall length. The pistol includes a single stage mil spec style trigger that breaks just under seven pounds. The heart of every firearm is its barrel, and CMMG equipped this one with a 12.5 inch 1 in 10 twist medium taper 4140 barrel that comes threaded 5 8 by 24, and of course that is covered up by CMMG's signature obnoxious comp. Due to the length of the barrel, the gas port was moved to the mid-length position to get a little bit more dwell time before the bullet exits the muzzle. We will revisit this later in the video. The M-Lock handguard stops just short of the back of the threading leaving just enough space for integration of advanced muzzle equipment and leave some workspace for tools while providing five slots of M-Lock attachment per side. Speaking of other amenities, CMMG has included a forged dual sling plate for those of us who want a direct primary attachment over the use of a QD stud, and the back end is fitted with the six position rip brace for fast effortless deployment. And the argument is, why on earth would you have a short barrel on a 308 gun? Well, today we're gonna compare 
what it is like to shoot 308 out of a short barrel. And we're gonna go ahead and leave the suppressor off, but we're gonna get a good idea of what kind of velocities we got spanking out of this short barrel. Ready whenever? Yep. Wait till you see it. Alrighty guys and gals, well as you can see data on screen over here, I am not a mathematician so I'm going to uh, roll it on screen after doing the numbers back at the computer and you can see what we got essentially. So the next question of course is accuracy. How accurate is this barrel? And when I think of accuracy, I don't necessarily think of how small is the group size because there are things that we can do to shrink group size uh, including uh, changing the shooter. but Really, what I think of as far as accuracy is what can this barrel stabilize? So not necessarily the size of the group, but what is the shape of the bullet hole? So I've got a couple different types of ammunition here. We're gonna shoot them and go down range and see what the bullet holes look like. And it's a bonus if we have nice little tiny groups. We're shooting at 50 yards. Uh, we're gonna lead off first with Fiocchi 308A. This is a 150 grain loading. Here we go. One seventy fives, and these are one hundred and eighty grain uh, Sierra Match Kings. Down here at the other end of the range, and we have some unexpected results. <laughs> when I started this segment, I thought, oh great, it's going to be one of those days where Kurtz can't shoot with a darn. And quick disclaimer, I varied the point of aim on the target, so these are not representative of the drop of the different rounds or anything like that. I moved them around the target so that we had clearly uh, resolved groups to look at. So, the gun really hated the 150 grain. These three right here are the 150 grain loading, and it really did not like those. I thought that it was me to start with, but it turns out, after persevering shooting the other groups anyway, the 175 grain and the 180 grain yielded much better results, which is completely counterintuitive to what I thought it was going to do. I thought for sure that it's going to like the 150s and it's going to hate the 175 and 180s, or maybe like the 175 and hate the 180s. I just assumed that the heavier bullets we're not gonna stabilize in that short of a barrel. Completely the opposite. And we can see that, and I'll get some tight shots with a different lens for you guys. You can see that the 180 grain and the 175 grain have nice round circles. The 150 grain rounds, we can see, clearly have some tearing of the paper. There's some tearing of the paper on these as well, but we can definitely see that there's a little less stabilization of the 150 grain for some reason, I don't know why. But you can clearly see that there's more tearing of the paper on the 150s than on the subsequent loadings. Now that might be the Sierra Match King. Uh, guys, I don't know. I'm just pulling the trigger here today. But I can think that we can definitively say that that gun will eat the match grade ammo. It will absolutely shoot the heavier stuff. So that is not something that we need to concern ourselves with as far as accuracy and potential of the gun is concerned. It will absolutely eat the heavier bullets. Alright everybody, well we said that we were going to recap the gas system on this gun at the beginning of the video and that's where we are now. And for the longest time I've been a proponent of the gas system on 308 AR-10s being drilled at the rifle length. Well, you can see that we really can't get a rifle length on this gun. We have to accept a mid-length 
because we're literally out of barrel. So because of that, this gun is fairly ammunition selective. I want to venture to guess what happened is when CMMG was initially testing this gun, they brought in a whole boatload of bulk 7.62 NATO ammunition because it's relatively inexpensive. It's like some M80 ball or something like that. And this gun probably ran flawlessly during the testing. When we ran M80 ball, it ran great. Remember that it is not like 5.56 and 2.23. It is the inverse of that. Usually 5.56 is hotter than 2.23 loads. 7.62 NATO is not usually as hot as 308 Winchester. Specifically our bulk 150 loads, which if you remember back, the gun didn't like anyway. It tends to not like those loads. And I believe that because of the position of the gas system, that it is overgassed with 150 grain 308 Winchester ammunition. So we recovered two brass pieces. I mean, I suppose there's probably more, but if you look here, this is indicative of overgassing. See how that's flattened right there? This happens on a bunch of different types of guns, but uh, it can be most problematic when we see it on a 308 gun because how do I put this? We've, ex we've expanded the size of the gun. So there's more space in the gun for issues to occur. So what is happening, why this occurs, is the carrier speed is too fast and it is basically slingshotting that piece of brass back against the deflector. That is basically hitting it, where's the flat side? Hitting it right there. And what happens is when that happens, it smashes it and then flings it forward like that. That's why you have ejection pattern that ends up this way. What you ideally want to happen is you want that casing to come out and smack off of the, th the neck of the case. And that's gonna cause it to go like this. <clears throat> Let's try it. And begin. I know, right? Oh my god, I got that. Oh. Same thing. Yeah, okay. you're good. Function. It's that same type too, yep. it's that weird one. Just dump that magazine. Right. Switch over to the PMAG and shoot that hostage target. Oh, that Ooh. was my fault. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that, that, that and you're not in battery. Nope. That's why the gun needs a forward assist. <laughs> yeah, that was totally my fault. <laughs> is that three for three? Yeah, that's three for three. See if you can finish out that magazine by going around the world. Nope. No function. Yeah. Collar done. Yep. Same thing. Are you able to... Did you capture that? Uh, can you look at slow-mo? Yeah, we, we could probably replicate it for slow-mo. I'm going to guess what's happening is it's overgassed. It's hitting the deflector. And instead of sending it forward, it's sending it back into the action and, and, get, catching it. and getting crushed. Consistently the yeah. same exact problem. Yeah. Okay. So that's our issue, I think. And it's funny because that gun was the epitome of reliability for today. Like. <laughs> Maybe uh, you should clean your guns there, Kirk. No. <laughs> that's definitely not the problem. Nope, nope. It's a metric is what that is. Well, it's cool other than that. It's very cool. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah, right. So that's what it's doing. For the wonderful viewers at home. Yeah, so this is actually smashed on two sides compared to one like we were seeing. And then when that second round's coming in, boom. Yeah. 
Let's try that out. It needs some mitigation. It needs mitigation. Yep. We'll get to the bottom of it. By the time we're done, it'll be legit. Yeah. No, this is still a badass little gun. So where do we go from here? Well, I had originally planned on this being a series anyway. And one of the things that we were going to do for this gun is I just assumed that we were going to need an adjustable gas block to be able to effectively suppress this gun. So from here, we need to get an adjustable gas system in this gun. And I've got some feelers out there right now. If you are a manufacturer of gas blocks and the like, then go ahead and ring me up. We'd love to talk about testing the gas blocks on this particular gun. Uh, and essentially, we knew that we were gonna have to do that for suppression anyway, but it just seems to be that because the gun's a little bit more ammunition selective because of the short gas system, that we're probably going to need that to get it to run a wide range of ammunition unsuppressed as well. So to me, not really a big deal. Now I did bring this to CMMG's attention and they are tinkering a little bit with perhaps some stuff on the carrier to be able to do that. We may be able to look at that in relative short order. Now it's also not as easy as just putting a heavy buffer in the back here as well, because the buffer's already got tungsten weights in it. We can't make it any heavier. So we're going to be playing a little bit probably with the reciprocating mass back here, CMMG is. And then hopefully we're playing with some adjustable gas here on the front to be able to dial that down a little bit. So in future iterations of this project, the ultimate 308 battle rifle, what we're gonna be doing is first playing with that gas system, and then if you have any other suggestions on things that you would like to see done with a short barrel 308, then go ahead and sound off in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching the VSO Gun Channel. Thanks for joining us on this project. I'm interested to see what you guys have suggested down in the comment section down below, and hopefully we'll see you guys on a future video here at the VSO Gun Channel. What's it doing to the casings? Just smash them when they get stuck in the door there? this oh okay yeah yeah got that one yeah that's not being reloaded all right go ahead and do your thing man you're gonna get made of fun of for that chicken wing <laughs> i it's just a bad okay we'll do it the rocky way <laughs>